In this video, I titled it Putting It All Together. We're really going to combine everything that we've learned in previous videos in order to graph polynomial functions. So, as we look right here, here's our example that we're going to graph. And so, what I have here is I have a third degree polynomial function. It is a cubic function. And I can see that its dominating term is 1x cubed. So, first off, let's start by analyzing what that tells about the end behavior. Maybe I'll kind of come up here to the top and say, okay, our end behavior is going to be controlled by that dominating term. And first off, we have an odd exponent, so that means our end behavior will be opposite. I could have one of these situations, or I could have one of these situations. So because the odd exponent, we know it's going to be one of those, the end behavior is opposite, but since it is positive, okay, that means our end behavior is going to look like this, okay? So that's kind of our first thing to consider. Next, we need to find our zeros. In order to find the zeros, this one actually does factor, but since in our previous videos we used rational root theorem, I'm going to use rational root theorem. So what I look at is, is however you define these numbers as P and Q, whatever you want to call them, but it's going to be factors of this number divided by factors of this number. So let me write those out real quick. So it's going to be factors of this 12 over factors of 1. I don't have to worry about the negative because we're going to consider the positive and negative um, values anyways. And so factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 all over 1. And so I'm just going to write all those. You know, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And i got to consider the positive and negative of each of those. Okay, so we basically have six options. Positive or negative, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So now that I have here these, let me word it this way. Our function will cross the x-axis at most three times. If the roots are real roots, they will be one of these numbers. Obviously, it can't be all of them because this is, what is this, 12 different um, values if you consider the positive and negative. But wherever it does cross the x-axis will be one of these. So I'm going to start by just picking a number and trying synthetic division to see if it's a root. So I'm going to start with negative 1. So I'm going to take the root of negative 1, and I'm going to take all of the coefficients. We have 1, 3, negative 4, and negative 12. I'm going to do some fast and furious synthetic division. Okay, We ended up with a remainder that's not 0. That means negative 1 is not a root. That means this function does not cross, cross the x-axis at negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here and I'm just going to erase that negative. And we're just going to go, work our way down the line and figure out what numbers do divide evenly out of this. And so, spoiler alert, I already have done the math on this and I know which ones work. So you could try positive 1 and positive 1 wouldn't work. Okay, So I could erase the positive 1, it doesn't work. But then we're going to get to, let's try positive 2 and see what happens. So 1 times 2 is 2, 5 times 2 is 10, 6 times 2 is 12, add straight down and get 0. That means 2 is a root, okay? So if I come over here, we go, I'm just going to graph it 1, 2, boom, 2 is a root. I'm going, to, I'm going to show that there. And then what we have now is we have a reduced polynomial. And what our reduced polynomial represents is x squared plus 5x plus 6. And you could continue doing rational root theorem um, to figure out what are the, the roots of this. But what I'm going to do is now that we're down to a quadratic, I'm just going to factor because I think this is going to factor pretty easily. And so our roots from this factored form are going to be whatever makes that 0. And in this case, that's going to be a negative 3 because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And then that's going to be a negative 2 because negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So our other roots are negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Okay. Now, we have our roots. And in fact, I can go ahead and write our, our full polynomial in factored form. And I'll, I'll kind of come up here and do that. So that f of x that we're given, we're given it in standard form as 1x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. But in factored form, we've already learned it's, it's going to be the same thing. I'll still call it f of x. But we said that, um, that 2 was a factor. 
So that means, excuse me, 2 was a root, so x minus 2 would be the factor. And then down here we had our x plus 3 and x plus 2. So our function is that. Now, now that we're here, I know my three roots, and we know our end behavior. So what I know is our function is going to start kind of going down this way, and it's going to go up this way, because that's what we established in kind of step one of this problem. And that's going to figure out what does it do at each of these zeros. Does it bounce? Does it wobble? Does it pass through? And you can see that each of our three zeros really has an invisible one exponent. They're all uh, roots with a multiplicity of one, so they're all going to be pass-through roots. Okay. And it's going to look something like that without being too exact. We know this is going to be our y-intercept. So if I really wanted to graph that, that's going to be a negative 12 right there. But this is basically how we graph that polynomial function. We use our rational root theorem to find our, our first root. And then we're able to factor and find our other two roots. We know it's going to have at most three because that exponent. And then we use this dominating term to find our end behavior. And there we go.